In this video, I'm going to overclock the 9800X3D and compare it to the stock settings with both settings using tweaked memories. For overclocking, I use PBO and increase the speed by 200 MHz. Now, the tricky part, the curve optimizer. I tested in a few games and for my CPU, negative 30 is not good as I'm seeing more clock speed drops using these settings. Keep in mind that some CPUs will need more voltage to stick close to the increased clock speed. After playing around, I ended up using for the comparison negative 20, but to be honest, it was hard to see any difference between 20 and 25. Do not set this without actually testing, because when increasing the clock speed, not all CPUs can maintain a frequency close to the 5425 MHz using high negative values. Before we dive into the side-by-side -side runs, I'm considering a tie whenever there is a performance difference of 3 frames per second or less at above 50 FPS, as this small difference can be attributed to margin of error. Some runs had more frame drops than others, and this will affect a bit the 1% lows and 0.1% as well. The graphics settings used for testing are shown before the side-by-side -side run. I've used a few runs from my previous video, the 9800X3D vs the 7800X3D, as there were no driver updates or game patches. For the games that have been updated between the videos, I tested them again, but there were no major differences.
This place is a total mess. Looking at the 1080p results without RT, in the majority of the games there is no performance improvement and mostly because of the 4080 Super. In Age of Mythology there is a small performance uplift of 5 frames per second, so it seems that a 200MHz increase doesn't bring much benefit. Enabling RT at 1080p reduces the performance gap, maybe there is a small bump in performance in Silent Hill 2, but to me that is within the margin of error I mentioned at the beginning of the video. As expected, increasing the resolution to 1440p, we are GPU bound and the 200MHz speed bump that we get with the overclock is not materialized. Let's have a look at the actual clock speeds in a few games. As we can see, the clock speed sits at the maximum frequency for both settings, with occasional dips below. The speed bump will be more useful in games using low settings, like competitive games, as opposed to single player games at high settings. In my opinion, I believe that AMD did the right choice in clocking the CPU 
at 5,225 megahertz, as at this clock speed there is a good balance between performance on one side and power and thermals on the other side. It's good that now the XVD CPUs can be overclocked, so those that want to squeeze a bit more performance out of it can achieve that, but don't expect a huge bump in performance. Like I showed in the air versus water cooling video, you can go beyond the 200 MHz limit, but doing so increases a lot the power needed to get a few extra MHz. And that's it for this video. If you found this video useful, hit the like button, drop a comment below to help with the algorithm, and subscribe to the channel. Take care and hope to see you all in the next one.